Thank you so much. Let's give praise to Yahweh today for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy to us. Amen. I appreciate so highly uh, all the hugs I got. I feel so loved today. I need a birthday every day then. <laughs> Thank you. And we praise Yahweh for Apostle Josh and for uh, Sister Baby. Let's praise him for them. Hallelujah. Wonderful people, wonderful leaders. They are such a blessing to me and to the body of Messiah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. All right. And since I'm grateful for the lady I call my girlfriend, but let's thank Yahweh for her. Hallelujah. And this time we brought all of the children with us, Shamaria, Shekinah, and Marvelous, except Regina, who is away and will be here soon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's always a joy to be with you. The last time I came, nobody beat me up. <laughs> and he said I can come back, so that's good news to me. So I'm here again. Amen. I hope that you enjoyed Teacher Errol last week and we are here to try our best to do whatever we can to help you as Apostle Josh is not around. Amen? Amen. Great. Uh, today, as usual, my brother and my sister Clyde, well, Clyde is my brother, my sister is Ron. <laughs> it's a joy to have them with me. We go way, 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 way. So far back that some of you will guess his age if I tell you but I'm 45 and I look like a teenager don't tell me no, don't mind a grey beard maybe born with grey hair, don't mind no grey beard I got <laughs> I feel as young as ever the more people hate me the younger I look <laughs> but it's a blessing to be with you <laughs> no papi Hallelujah. <coughs> to the viewers who join us by Facebook as well, it's so good, uh, so good to share this day with you all. Uh, the Apostle Shaul wrote a letter to the church at Corinth, and we're still talking about love. Because what I've been instructed to do for a while ago is to teach the body of Messiah about love so we can understand clearly as saints how we should deal with each other. If people were in error regarding the name, they didn't know the name of the Messiah, and they thought that some of them said they always knew it, and they taught you what was wrong, then it is highly possible that what they taught us about love was also wrong. Because when the spirit of error would have blinded their minds, he blinded their minds to the entire truth. Amen? Amen? And what the world, which is called church in many cases, what, what, what the worldly church taught us to be love is nothing close to it. And I always say the things that the world, the world church I call them because the world fits into them perfectly. The world church, the worldly church, the church who's just like the world because it's possessed with the spirit of the world. They would have taught us about love in a manner that makes us crippled from living the way we said we should in reference to love. They taught us love to mean that you accept just about anything as long as it doesn't bother you that much. For example, most of you, if you follow the news, maybe today you'll see it or tomorrow, for the second time in the history of our country, yesterday, the Sodomites went to the street. Men dressed as women, women dressed as men, full-blown, hardcore, Sodomites were in Georgetown marching and parading and dancing in the street in the name of gay pride. One of them, who's an Anglican, you got any Anglican church on here? Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, too far. Y'all guys get a big speaker and put a speaker way up there. We'll talk. One from the Anglican church, dressed like an Anglican priest. With his collar, a cross, which got a crucifix, you know the priest wear the cross on the neck. He dressed in a black shirt, the, the priest collar. And so did the placard said he's a Christian homosexual in Guyana. I tell me in the US, in Guyana. Saying, when the man asked him, okay, why are you dressed like a priest? He said he dressed like a priest to show the, the world and the country that God loves homosexuals. Oh, 
And God doesn't have a problem with homosexuals. Because Jesus, not Yeshua, Jesus died, he said, to remove the law. So the reporter said, which law did Jesus die to remove? He said, all the laws that men wrote against love, which the scripture never said. But that's what this country has come to. Because of the church. And one word, love. You see, the, the Sodomites know, the anti-men know very well that if I get these people to treat me with what they think is love, I will never change. Because if you hurt, if you talk to me badly, you don't love me. So they show up in church and everybody has to hug them and treat them nice because when you hug them, they change. Hugging doesn't change anybody. You all all right? Apostle Josh shouldn't come back. So let me give you a hard set. So you're going to miss me when I go on. <laughs> These people know very well how to, to twist the church and to make John Smith, Raphael Messiah, Ellsworth Williams, all of y'all can't talk. I just call them by the name. I don't say some pastors. They don't work for me. Yeah. If I know you, they may call your name. They are yet to make a public statement continually against sodomy. How many years ago was it? Almost two years we started marching against this thing right here. Two years now, they said when we took to the streets in Georgetown, some Apostle Joshua came. They said, uh, somebody said to them, why y'all can't talk on this London man in the street marching against these people? You know what they said? We're writing a statement. We're preparing something to put in the news. Oh, yeah. It can't finish yet. Oh, yeah. oh, Two years and they can't send to the, the Starbuck News or Ghana Chronicle what they want to say about this behavior. Uh-huh. And they want to be loving. So when we did that, they said, uh, we don't have love. That's the church. The church said when we went to Martin Georgetown, we don't have love. When we walked in Carriverton the, other, the last time, they said, we don't have love. So because they have love, the Sodomites march and now wearing the priest's clothes. Mm -hmm. And say, Jesus loves us just like this. He doesn't want us to change. When the scripture says that, do not be deceived, no effeminate will inherit the kingdom. That's right. The scripture calls a male homosexual a dog. Thank you for the one yes. Because everybody else in one talk. And if you call him dog, you know what they say to you? That you don't have love. Now y'all show me a hand in here. Don't, don't lie to me. How many of you would be okay telling a homosexual you're a dog? I will. One, two, three and a half, four and a quarter. Don't put your hand up because the going to test you for real now. That's a word. <laughs> if Yahweh says they're dogs and you say I love you with the love of God which one of you are better you or Yahweh? Yahweh. Yahweh. No, it can't be Yahweh because Yahweh says you're a dog. Yeah. And earthlings saying no, I love you with the love of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I am here to teach us today why Yahweh in his wisdom told the apostles to teach the church about loving each other. Each other. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This text is so, every time a pastor comes to talk about love, and they do this in February for Valentine's, they give you the love scripture. Well, let me give you another love scripture this morning then. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Some of y'all know it so well. I may speak in the tongues of men, even angels. But if I lack love, I become merely a blaring brass or a clanging cymbal. Little drumstick. Or, get a drumstick for me, please, brother Clyde. Hit that cymbal in there. From verse 1. Hit that cymbal. Don't break it now. You're too strong. Come on, hit this thing like this. That's a cymbal. That's a clanging cymbal. I can help you all this thing this morning since you know it so well. In other words, let me start from verse 1. The text is saying, all the pastors get up and begin to preach. If I speak with the tongues of men, the from King James Version, and of angels, but I have not love, I become a tingling brass and a clanging cymbal. But that's a clanging cymbal right there. What it means is, you're making a sound that's loud. Ah. Uh -huh but it has no effect on a person. Why am I starting with this? Because of Israel, that's where Israel started. 
the church, uh, some of you have left it. I hope you all left the church you've been in anyway. Because if you came to visit today, you might not come back. The church that some of you have left to be here would have taught some of you all that talking in tongues makes you so spiritual. Oh, yes. You don't know that? Oh, yes. And I to the right side of people. Oh, yes. right, good. Uh, they taught you that, and they taught me that. I can show you the spirit now. <laughs> right, right. Everybody in this room has to speak in tongues. Because you have to have Holy Spirit. So for us to have Holy Spirit, we can come to church at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock for prayer meeting. And then we're going to wait. We'll tarry. We'll wait for Holy Spirit. And at 12 o'clock at midnight, they say, now at midnight you're getting. So five hours you're in church. Waiting for a chance to talk in tongues. And if you can't talk in tongues, you come in your ears and say, well, repeat after me then. And everybody start making noise. Anybody had an experience in church? Okay, good. I'm talking to the, talking to the right set of people. You have to make a lot of noise to show you have Holy Spirit. Now look at the text carefully here. It says that if I speak with the tongues of men or angels and I don't have love, I'm just making noise. The church said, let's wait for five hours to talk in tongues. But can't spend five minutes to teach you how to love somebody. My Lord. Has anybody in here ever been in church for five hours with the pastor saying, Nobody's leaving until we learn to love one another? Oh, yeah. Never. Oh, Thank no. you so much. Never. Because love doesn't make a sound. Hmm. We can impress people with noise called tongues. But love is normally shown when nobody's watching. When you and the sister are not in here, love still functions. When the sister is hungry, we'll get to that text in a minute. And you go to give the sister some food, nobody's supposed to see that. All right. Love is still functioning. If your brother doesn't have clothes to wear and you have clothes to so give him clothes to wear, nobody should know about it and love is still functioning. But with towns, there's a sound that people make and the church says you're spiritual. Amen. You're a prayer warrior. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I know many saints who have been asking Yahweh for a long time, please give me tongues. Let me talk like this pastor and this prayer warrior. But don't ask him to give them love because you don't have to in the first place. Verse 2 says, that I may have the gift of prophecy. I may fathom or get to understand all mysteries. Deep things in scripture. I may know everything. Have all faith. Enough to move mountains. But if I lack love, I'm nothing. So we read this text. Has anybody ever read this before? Heard people preach from this before? Anybody ever heard people preach from 1 Corinthians 13? Okay, some folk have heard it before. Good, good, wonderful. All right, church. Let's see if we get this right. So, Sister Renetta, Prophetess Renetta. She so called her Prophetess. She's a prophetess. What is now? The church said, you're a prophetess? Because she tell me that I get a man, I got a man. She's a prophetess. She said that this sister here will get sick and the person got sick. She's a prophetess. This woman said Diana will find oil and they found oil. She's a prophetess. Oh my Lord, she told me that in three days I got a financial breakthrough and I got it. She's a prophetess. Everything she said was absolutely true. Absolute, absolutely accurate. It was on point. So you can't say that she wasn't telling the truth. But Yahweh said that if she doesn't have love, she is still nothing. nothing. Watch this. The church calls her prophetess. And Yahweh says you're nothing. Do you know how many all in this room have respected nothing? So true. Because you pay attention to how accurate the prophecy is. And Yahweh is looking at how, how pure is your mind up towards Yahweh's people. Because if in her mind she's saying I'm a prophetess, you have to carry my bag and you have to you have to come and give me some money for a prophecy. Yahweh said you're nothing. 
Most people I know call prophets mighty men of God because the prophets give them personal prophecies. That sound good. Facebook still here? Yeah. Good, I'm glad you're here then. Let me, have, let me fix some of your business money right now. A prophet in the church is not supposed to be governed by giving people personal prophecy. You're not supposed to have no prophet lying in the church. You want to me carefully? Line up here. I got a word for you. 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 No, no, church, don't go like that. No. Because on this line of prophecy here, I ain't going to prophet stop anybody else and say, you number five. Leave the people money alone. You're a thief. That, no, you have a heart in the church? No. So hold on here. So you mean to tell me that everybody in this here is, is absolutely pure and righteous? Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Nope. Oh. I love it. You're preaching now. Oh. Oh. I, I see a breakthrough. And all I'm going to say words. Yeah. I see a shift in the spirit. Yeah. I see God about to turn something around for you. Turn what? Yeah. Ask them, what are you turning? I see you believing God for something a long time and he said he'd make it happen. What? That's right. What? But persons don't understand this text and they read it so many times. The scripture said even further, I can have faith to move mountains, meaning I can do powerful miracles. Right. And Yahweh said you're nothing. nothing. Can you think of how many nothings you submitted to? Somebody can be able to open the Bible and give you mysteries from the scripture. And if they don't have love, there's still nothing. Some of you are calling nothing your man of God. And a woman of God. And Yahweh said there's nothing in my eyes. Why? Because Yahweh is love. So let's go deeper into the text. We get into what love is. You see, Yahweh is so smart, so wise. He said... I'll show you all the things that could disqualify you and then I'll tell you what love is. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 gets even stronger. See, he's building the thing now to, to set the church up. Watch. Verse 3 says, I may give away everything that I own. Now that's love right there, boy. You can't be that. You know what it is for somebody to give away everything they have. I may even hand over my body to be burned. No, you can't be that. That's the ultimate love right there. And still Yahweh said you could do all that and don't love people. Mm. You know what it is to sell your car or your house to give to somebody. And Yahweh said you still don't have love inside you. Mm. How is that possible, Apostle? Well, thank you for asking me. Because Yahweh judges your intention, yeah. not your action. What is behind this action? Aha! Yes, uh -huh. If you think that I could sell my house to let the whole church have loving, you don't have it. Because your intention is pride. You want people to think you're loving. When you love somebody, you don't have to sell it thinking that if I do this, then they'll say I have love. Love comes from within you to say, because I love you, I'm going to do this, even if you don't do it back to me. Okay, even if I'm not acknowledged. You know, many people leave church saying, Pastor, I'm grateful because they didn't call my name. Yes, yes. So true. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If you come here to sweep this fellowship hall because you want Apostle Joshua to say you're, you're a good person, don't sweep it. Don't sweep it. That's good. Y'all might say amen. Say quick, say amen, please. Let me say that. Like, right, right. Amen. Thank you very much. You must not do things to be seen of men. For men will reward you in the earth. And that's all you get. When nobody is watching, can you do the things you normally do to say to, to other people? Somebody takes their body and says, Okay, they burn me for this whole church. And the church says, Boy, that man gave his life for all of us. And he always said, No, he didn't. He gave his life to make an impression on all of you. Wow. 
What a way to go up. <laughs> Dying. And everybody believed that you're such a loving person. He always said, look at you. Nothing. I'm trying not to shout to them, trying to be as calm as ever. Because I want you all to get this. Imagine going to that extent where at the funeral the whole church gets up and says, that was a man of God. Imagine he gave up himself for all of us and Yahweh saying that was nothing. Part to that. Can you imagine if somebody is a true prophet? <laughs> can really see. And prophetess Ram decides to come and say, Church, I know that everybody crying for Brother Harry here. And, and I know that the, Harry gave his life, y'all think. But Harry was proud. Oh. You know what I'm talking about. Can you imagine what happens to her after that statement? I can hear church people, the blood of Jesus. The blood against you, you're the devil. Right away, it's abuse. You don't have love. I always knew it. Right away, every prophecy she gave me for no count. Because she can't see this man was a good man. Wow. That's the church we're living in today. Whereby you have to find the best things to say rather than saying the truth. But not in here. Not in here. If Yahweh reveals that the person's intention was not right, you can't call it right. That is not love. Are you all still here? Amen. You sure you're here? Amen. Oh, good. Because the scripture says you gain nothing from giving everything if you don't have love. Mm -hmm. Love is, verse 4, everybody know it now. Love is, you all got it on your mirror in your room. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, and some people, most of you in here, and I'm not saying this to make you feel bad, it's the truth. Most yeah. people who read that don't know what it means. Exactly. Every Valentine's Day, they tell you the same thing, you don't even understand what it means. Because they don't know what it means either. My job this morning is to bring the church here and those on Facebook into an understanding of what these things, yes, this sir. description means. And once you see I bring this here, if I used to make altar calls, half of y'all will be here already this morning. Because you realize how much love you did not have when you thought you did. You ready? Yes. You're sure? Yes. If you have heart problem, blood pressure problem, take a pill, put it on your tongue. <laughs> and let your pressure drop because your pressure will go up and spike in a minute and I finish with you this morning. You all right? You're good? I'm asking you, if you know you can't take it, go home and wait. You walk far from the sound, so you, kept, you would say, I didn't hear what he said. Because after you hear what I say today, you don't have an excuse. Facebook, you could log out, you could come off the broadcast. Because once I say what I have to say today, you don't have an excuse. Sure, well, you choose to stay, no problem. I talk then. I can't say, give you a warning, I have witness. Did everybody hear me say, if you can't take this, you're free to go? Fine, and you stay, so I can talk. Love is three left. Good. All right. Love is patient. What does that mean? Patience in this text means that when love, and that's why we have to love each other, because you can't treat a sinner like this. When I get through talking to you today, if you tell me that you love a sinner, you're one yourself. Yeah. You all stay one stay? Yeah. Fine then. Let me that drunk throat. Since you want to stay, no problem. Stay. Don't move. Stay right here. So it's too tough. And you could take it. Look at trying to break up your drum thing. Samuel? Oh, I can break it. Came back to life. All right, y'all can see me? All right. Patience me. That you will sit. Hey. All right. You will sit and watch a situation that's rough, hard, bad, tough come to you and pass you and you don't move. Some of you get it in a minute. All right, all right. If you love her 
or you love her. And you see this person is going to hurt me. You don't move. Y'all, y'all understand? Don't say yes if you don't understand what I said to you. Patient means I will sit right here. You will come right here. You may hurt me, but the hurt will pass, and I will not change my position. All right, all right. Do you love somebody that much that you call a sinner, where you could sit and go through a whole lot of foolishness with them, and still stay in your position called love? Hmm. Some of you in here don't love one another like that. Because you kick to say, I got tired of you. No, 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 no. Love doesn't give you that liberty. That's why Yeshua the Messiah said, when Kepha said, how many times must I forgive my brother? That's what he said, not a sinner. Not a wicked devil. He said, my brother, my brother in the same kingdom. He said, 70 times 7 in a day. That's 490 times. Right. Your brother could do you wrong in one day. You can't say, I'm done with you. No. Wow. Do you have love? That's patience. Patience does not say, I have had enough of the situation and I'm leaving. Patience says, I will sit here until the situation goes. Yeah. And I'm still here. Bless you, sis. Hallelujah. That is love. Yes. Mm. You're still breathing? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> yes, it's patient. Love has kindness attached to it. Kindness speaks to having a heart that says the best for the person is what I want. Most pastors who are standing in pulpits preaching now are the most unkind people you ever know. In Caribbean. In Crabble Creek. In Guyana. In the U.S. Why? Because if you look at their lives, they have the nerve to continue to take from the poor. Something called tithe. I'm not supposed to talk to you all about that already. And they don't care if the poor is suffering afterwards. And if you don't eat, they tell you pray. Yes. While they take the money. That is being unkind. Kindness has something called compassion attached to it. Where you feel for somebody. That's love. Love is not jealous. Lord have mercy. I ain't going to throw all them today because they all can't take all. <laughs> Jealousy. Because Yahweh, people said, but apostle. Yahweh said I'm a jealous God. So they start getting confused. Now yes. let me help you to not be confused today then. If I were a Baptist preacher. Uh, I tell you, touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Do you own me? Do you own me? Own O W N. You're freaking to ask me, brother. No. Oh. <laughs> because to be jealous means that you have ownership of something. Yahweh is jealous of us because he owns us. When I love you, I can't be jealous of you because I don't own you. So because I don't own him, I can't control him. But have you ever been in a church where the pastor says, you're my member? Yes. And my church? Yes. And my baby? Yes. Uh-huh. And my labor? And my vision? You ever heard this kind of statement? Yes. So once they express ownership of you, they're jealous of you. So that's why when some of y'all used to come here, they're mad. Because they feel they own you. So they say that Apostle Joshua took my member. I know. He's stealing my sheep. But love does not try to own each other. It looks out for the interests of one another. 
Love doesn't try to control one another. Are we here, church? Yeah. Love is not boastful. Oh, I know preachers who talk about, oh, this, this, I can drive what I want to drive. Hallelujah. I can buy what car I want to buy. Yeah. I can wear what suit I want to wear. Do you see how I dress? And they start boasting about themselves. Yeah. That is not love. And the worst thing is to do it with your money. Yeah. And then tell you that God give them it. That is love. Love isn't proud. It's not rude. Hmm. How many children love to say they love their parents? Come on, preach that thing. Ah! At the funeral, you see the, 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 the mommy star holler. And little girl started bawling at the funeral. I love my mommy. Love who? Love is not rude. Rudeness is not attached to love. Come on. I see some faces in here, dog. Some of y'all look at it. It's not getting blue. You don't die by 12 o'clock. You can live in 45 minutes. You still be bad. Rudeness is not a manifestation of love. If you love your parents, you would never be rude to them. And even if you slip into rudeness, you'll apologize very quickly. Talk, sister, baby, talk, man. Yes, you so quiet at the back there. Tell them. You got some children with stand across their ma. And then come in the house to sleep. Yes. 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 And take out food on the pot. And eat, then go sleep. Yes. And mommy crying, oh God, you got me, cuss me. Why y'all don't try them to me? Why? Why? Why you don't try them to why you don't give it a, a shot? <laughs> huh? Yes! Yes, Papi. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not afraid to talk. Go ahead. My sister at Lang Park, my sister Nata, the mother, the father, the sister, all of them are cosmos. When we talk, I am the enemy mm. in that home. I just in, in this morning when I went to bed, the father talked to the son, your mother so. Wow. The dad talked to something or something, your mother. I said, my this is your mother and your father bring you. Or how you can do so? I'm not afraid of them. Yes. I only pray of Yahweh. Yeah. 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 And I don't pray to talk. I say you want to beat, want to, you want to beat me. When you meet close, can me say hand cannot raise. Hallelujah. I said, do the next if you get passion. I said, but you can do you want me to say no. In this age, I live my life until God ready to me. Hallelujah. I never see one corrupted thing in this whole world, my whole family. And I'll be one for the whole family. But this overmark of what the man is a goldsmith, when he drives more than 100, 200,000 every week, he put a, he let a piece of dark figure lesson. Oh. All them Longera, we call them Longera, knock about people them. I saw them, they have teeth and they do things and they watch them. Come can I come here? Come and take this avenue off, we pick me up to something your mother saw, your daddy saw. Don't us out. Thank you for that. And yeah. expose them. Yeah. I don't care what anybody say who live here around there. Yeah. I don't care what I say. Yeah. I'm yeah. living the life. Yahweh. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Papi. Bless you. That's it. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Can't be rude and say you love your parents. That's right. And you can't be talking in tongues and be rude to your parents either. You got some pastor children, they can't talk, the pastor can't talk to them. Some apostle can't control the children. Some prophet and prophet S can't control the children. But they won't control the church. That is not in the scripture. Some of the most rude people I ever met were pastor's children. And apostle children. 
And I tell one, not me. Why some of y'all don't want ministry? I can see the red. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I take the pastor's son outside and take off my belt by the pie inside the church and put a beating in him. I said, you don't try to with me. You could try that with your pa, not me. Y'all right. think I'm joking now? I beat him at the church service. <laughs> and I said, come back inside. And you will smile and play the keyboard. You only make your face crazy, I beat you again. <laughs> and when I don't tell the pa, I beat you son. Because you're going to be rude to me, I don't tolerate foolishness. And you best don't talk wrong too. Yeah. You can't have nobody child in the church. In the, you are an adult. And some of you respect pastors so much and apostles so much and providers so much that their children could do what they want. Not in here. All right. exactly. I tell people all the time, if I can't correct your children, don't bring them to church. Don't bring them around me. Say amen. amen. Any child in here, if an adult can't talk to you, trouble. No, boy. I beat him. I beat him more than once, too. Let's go outside. Come. You want to be rude to me? When his mother tell him, I will call, but the London used to holler. Ball. No, no, call him. Sorry, mommy, sorry. And we were very, he loved me dearly, but I told him, I said, you will not be raised to be an always stubborn, rebellious, do what I want past this child, not under my watch. Glory. Love is not selfish, church. It doesn't think about itself alone. I see people, pastors, preachers, apostles, but bishop, all they call themselves. When the church has a dinner, they sit at the biggest table. They eat turkey and, and, and chicken breasts. And you eat piece of chicken wing. They got a big fancy knife and fork with gold and diamond. And you got plastic fork trying to climb and cut the meat out so hard. And they call that love. That is being selfish. They eat what they want. You have to eat what you're given. That is selfish. That is not how the church functions. And they call it honoring the man and woman of God. They're selfish. Or the next one is a big boy here. Love is not easily angered. I'm just going to them quickly to get to the set where I really want the church this morning. Love doesn't get angry easily. But the trouble with the church is the church doesn't even understand what anger is. Not easily angered does not mean that love does not become angry. I love that. Because some people don't understand what this means. Yeah. They, they feel it. Not easily angered means you should never become mad. Oh, it's attached to patience. What did they always say? You could be angry, but don't sin. You are supposed to become angry at certain things. But when you're dealing with your brother and your sister, don't be quick to get mad at them. Because love always tries its best to reason beyond what it sees and say, okay, maybe there's more to it than this. So they try to talk to you and say, well, brother, you did this or you said this. Why did you say it? What made you say that, sis? What drive you to make this statement? What caused you to say that? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? Were you having a bad day? That's how love functions. It tries its best to see the best in you. But you got some people in the church, let me talk to them, who somehow feel that they are free to do what they want to do. You must not get mad. All right. All right. You're calling God. Thank you, sis. That is not love. Love has the right to become angry because Yahweh got angry at his own people. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, y'all hear then? Good. Yes. Yahweh told Moshe, Moshe, step aside. All right. Let me kill every last one of them. All right. That was love talking. Was love. Don't we say God is love? Uh -huh. Well, Yahweh said, Moshe, back off, back, back, back away. Because this said here can't understand my kindness. I will kill him more. She said, oh, don't do it, don't do it. And he said, make all kinds of negotiations. Yeah, we said, okay then, all right. Fine, because of you, I didn't do it. 
and Moshi died with the same set. Because uh -huh. Yahweh still killed them. Yeah. And Moshi. Yeah. Because of them. Yeah. <laughs> when Yahweh tells you to leave people alone, he knows better than you. Yeah. Back off. Leave them alone. He told you in his wisdom, leave them alone. Right. Because when I'm ready to deal with them, you will pay the price. He's too wise for you to think he could talk. And man, you don't understand what you're doing, man. Don't, don't do this. You get it straight, Yahweh. She's a nice girl. She just got a few problems here and there. And Yahweh said, leave them alone. Because I know you're playing with trouble. All right. Hallelujah. Let me help you with the not easily angered part. Love is not easily angered because whenever... You can open it. Thank you. Whenever love gets mad at you, you could never say it's unfair. Somebody fell asleep. Somebody falls. You didn't hear that part. Love is not easily angered because whenever it gets angry, you could never say the person was in fear. Love takes a time. Love is right there saying, man, you shouldn't do that. This isn't good. You shouldn't do this. Yeah. So whenever love gets mad, the person can't say, listen, you treated me in an unfair manner. All right. I know some people around me say, man, apostle, man, you're way too patient, man. You, you, I know you're supposed to do something. I say, not yet. No, it's all right. I got it. Thank you so much. That's how that function. When you love people, don't be quick to get mad at them. Oh! It's coconut water! <laughs> yeah, boy, you have to make me preach now for sure. Ah, I feel it right there. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what a doctor recommend right here, Papi. Brother Clyde, here when most people miss this in the church. Love is not easily angered. Watch this. But when it gets angry, oh, yeah. most of you can't take it. Yeah. Sure. So the average church person that I know tries to stop you from being angry. And they don't change what they don't change what causes you to become angry. In other words, they're doing something they shouldn't do, and you tell them don't do it. And they see you start getting angry, you know what they tell you? Love isn't anger. They don't say, let me stop what I'm doing. doing they tell you love doesn't get mad. All right. While they keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. But love has a way. When it gets to this stage right here, it says, I will act in your best interest. Watch this. Which may include hurting you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Since you want scripture for that one. Mm -hmm. in, in Romans, in Hebrews, I think it is. In Hebrews. Shaul told the church, he said, Saints, don't ever become mad or discouraged when Yahweh begins to put blows on you. Because whoever Yahweh loves, he chastens. He would beat you then. That's love. Yahweh said, I love you. He's love. But when you want to get me mad, I will beat you until you get it right. He's slow to anger. But when he gets angry and he begins to act, he said, I'm going to beat you until you get it right. So here we are coming to the altar. Oh, we know God. Oh, I want to break through you. And we said, nope, I'm going to break you up. You don't break through this. I'm going to beat you until you get it right. right. Because I've been talking to you and won't listen to me. Yeah. That's how love functions. Yes. If you're a parent, you know that's exactly what I'm telling you. You tell your child, don't do that. Don't do that, baby. Don't do that. Don't do that. Marie, don't do it. Marvelous, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do it. Stop. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Uh -huh. Don't do it. After a while, what do you do? Oh, uh, there you go. Come here. Come. Come here. Come here. I tell you don't do it. And then the blow start. I didn't tell you. Don't do this. Stop. And the child is going to go crazy. <laughs> because love saying to you, I had enough of your foolishness. Now I'm going to deal with you in this manner here. But the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about love is it is not easily angered and it's not angry for long. That's it. Love calm down after finish with you. You catch yourself and say, Good, you, you alright? Perfect. Let's roll again now. Let's go. Be good. You got a problem. 
Do you know how many people deal with me think that I'm angry with them and I'm not? Because they, they think that like every other preacher, when an apostle talks to me, he can store this stuff for five, for five years to do what with it? When I, if I rebuke you now, I'm done with that. If I say, hey, stop, wait, when you're right, don't do that. I'm done. I'm finished with that long time. You come to me five weeks and I'll say, Apostle, you hurt my feelings so bad. I didn't want to come to you because I thought you still mad at me. I'm mad at you for what? Why would I have to hold on to something that I corrected you about? Love in the church would tell us you correct the wrong and you still love and move forward. Because the next thing says, it keeps no record of wrong. All right. Yet again, the preacher says this here means that love forgets. That is not what it means. Keeping no record of wrong means that love does not try to stack up things against you. Yes. All right, what does that mean? Okay, all right. You hurt my feelings yesterday. Mm -hmm. I got one. I got save the one by. I can wait patiently for. Yeah, love doesn't do that. Love doesn't exactly. Love doesn't try to say, okay, you were wrong yesterday. So today, when you come to church, I gonna treat you like you're wrong. Love doesn't do that. Love doesn't have a record book to say, let me write everything you do wrong for the whole week. Just so by the end of the week I can tell you that you're not saved. It doesn't keep a record of wrongdoing. Because love wants to have the best thought about you. So it wouldn't store bad thoughts in itself to say, I will treat you badly based on what I think about you. Do you have love for the saints? Do you? Now let's see if we can get to verse number 7. No! Verse 6 first. Love doesn't gloat or love doesn't get happy over other people's sin. Lord in mercy. Wait a second here. Because I heard the assemblies of God and these other people who talk about love. And those same preachers are saying they can't wait for the day. When I fall, when Apostle Josh falls, when one of y'all fall. Now, what kind of love is that? Hmm. When does love say it hopes for you to fall? And it will be happy to know you fell. Love doesn't do that. Love is never happy to see somebody in trouble. When the class is quiet, the teacher's teaching right. Good. So verse 7 is the part that I warned you about before. And you stayed. So now we're here. Verse 7 says love always bears up. Or it bears all things. <laughs> I could not figure out for the life of me what this meant. Until Yahweh revealed it. Love bears all things. It always trusts. It always hopes. I mean, it hopes in all things. It always endures. Verse 7 is dangerous. It kills you. Love bears all things means, church, that love when somebody loves you. The person, when you do or if you do something that is wrong, look at love. I'm talking that's why you can't love wicked people in the church. Love says, I love you. Because I love you when you do something wrong or if you do something wrong. Love says, come. Come, kind. Come, she kind. Let me show you because I want a small person. I need a small person. A tiny body <laughs> that could fit behind me. All right then. So she kind does something wrong in the church. And I'm the leader. Oh, yeah. Some of you oh, yeah. who come from the old system oh, yeah. will know that we have a members meeting. Ah, because Sister Shekinah oh. fell into sin. And brethren, according to the standard of Christian doctrine and practice, or according to the churches that we have a, 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 a constitution, the sister has to be put on suspension. Because the sister has to be on discipline. She sinned. Watch this. I am the leader. The sister came and told me in private, Pastor, I did this wrong. 
I tell the sister we're going to have to have a board meeting. You watch me in Carriverton, some young get a heart attack, right? All right, right yes, now. Yes, yes. You watch me for a semi of God, you're going to die before yes. Friday if you can. Yes. Yes. Some of y'all can't even breathe before Friday. All right. She talked to me in private and said, I have sinned. Pastor, I feel so bad, I feel terrible. I really shouldn't do what I did. And I asked Yahweh to forgive me. The pastor tells her, we have to have a board meeting. And he calls the board. Tell her what you did. I've been sleeping with Brother Harry. And I'm this. And I smoke weed. And the, oh, that's what you did. And Mr. Deacon crosses his leg and says, well, according to the rules of the church, you have to go before the body. Because the body has to know that you sin. And you have to be undisciplined for six months. Okay. So they bring her before you. I said, this sister was found in sin. She committed fornication. She's not allowed to have communion. She's not allowed to sing. She's not allowed to dance. She will sit for six months. Until the discipline is over. And all you say the same, Rabbi, pastor is a serious man. No pastor is a devil. And I'll show you from the book why he's a devil. Love bears all things. Let me tell you what Yahweh said it means now. When you say, I have sinned, pastor, and I'm sorry. Say that. I have sinned, pastor, and I'm sorry. Watch what love bears all things means. Come behind me, baby. Come here. I will go to the church and I got you covered. All right. None of you could point no finger at her. All right. Y'all all right? Yes. I don't come and tell you what she did. All right. Because she repented already. All right. I protect her from you. Because I'm restoring her to her place of righteousness. Because she already said I sinned. That's right. That's what bears all things mean. It means to keep a secret to preserve her from you. Yes. Yes. How many preachers you know could bear you up in love? Um, Brown here. Find them. And bring them to me. Let me see them today. No way. You know how many of y'all talk to Pastor Josh? We never come here and start preaching and say, you did it, you that you did. Never. Because I know him. Mm. Do you know many people who have talked to me in private and said, Apostle, Dad, I did something wrong. And not one of y'all will ever know. I will die and you wouldn't know. Yeah. I said, now stand behind me. I got you, baby. You're going to be all right. Don't worry. But Apostle, Brother Clyde going to say that I'm wrong. You can tell you that? I come over this side. You can't tell her nothing. All right. Why you want to talk to her? But what? That's what love bears all things means. I will protect her. Because I know that if I expose her to you, she shall be ruined. Say it, sis. You know how many persons this morning can't go to church because they brought her to the front here? Yes. After we talked to you in private? My yes. God. Yes. No. What is worse is if I am doing what she is doing. And because you ain't get deacon a little bit, he vets. All right. saying that I want discipline. All of yes. you are put in front of the church. Yes, yes. This is protection, church. This is what the pastor should have been doing. It is not that I'm saying you're right. Good. Like I'm that. saying because you show me that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. yes. And you don't want to be wrong anymore. I got you covered. Yes. This is not leaving this office. I call him no deacon to tell him that you sin because the deacon is Yahweh. The scripture says that if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Yeshua the righteous. What does that mean? It means you still got the same thing in heaven. Somebody stand before the Father and say, I got a covered Father. The book said that Yeshua bore our sins to the cross. He never took your sin to the Father. He nailed it to the tree and said, that's it. This is finished. I have paid the price for your sin. How does that mean? After I protect you like that, you can go and keep doing this for 500 years. 
then you don't have love either. Because love in the church says, because of how you treated me, I shall remain protected. And I will change here. So when they see her again, there's nothing different. And none of you can say, I got a record of wrong against you. That's what it means to bear her up. <laughs> if you look at some faces in here this morning, I know you didn't know what it meant, but now you know. So now you know. Let me see how you treat somebody that you love. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you. Bless you, sis. Do you know why many people in the church don't come to talk to even the leaders about their wrong? Because they don't know how to bear them up. They know how to follow the constitution. But what amazes me is how come pastor can bring your own child to the church? Why he can't can bring his son and say, just like her, I can bring you before the whole church? <coughs> when you tell me that you sin, my first job is to know what state of mind you're in when you're talking to me. Is it in your mind to say you will continue or that you want to stop? Once you make me know that you want to stop, I shall protect you. Sometimes, if you don't want to stop, I have to tell you one person, hey, Ron, help this girl. I tell the church, help her. Stand by her. Because now we got the next part, which says love endures everything. It ties into the bearing part. Because when I'm enduring, I'm saying, I got you in this process here. We going through this because I'm letting you go. I, every time you tell me to do something wrong, I am not going to let you go. That's what endure means. I'm going to stand by you until you get it right. All right, all right. How many of us have endured with our brothers and our sisters? All right. The person who told me, Apostle, you have to bring them before the church. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. See New Jersey right here? Thank you, Carl. The folk in Jersey who told me what I saw before the whole, at another church, a big church was against me, wanted to do everything possible to bring it down, bring me down. And somebody did wrong. And I said to the church, I know that normally you want me to put her on discipline and do this and do that. I said, but for me, I will take the wrong. Even if it costs me everything, she will not be treated the way you want her to be treated. Hallelujah. No. The word was spread throughout the community. How I got people getting pregnant in the church, I did not care. Because for me it was, I will protect you. At all cost. The beautiful thing is, she still had the nerve to leave. And it still didn't make me change how I treated her. I ain't gonna make no Facebook post say, imagine love some people in the walk away. I don't do the kind of foolishness. When I protect her, I protect her because it's my job. If she chooses to walk away and leave me, I don't know, come to church and say, well, girl, you remember Shekinah? It's church, y'all gotta know what she did today. Cause I've been trying to protect this girl, but she didn't want to listen. So I'm gonna tell you what she did. You don't do that. Love doesn't do that. Love says, I protected you. You choose to walk away. I will still not tell them what you did. Because time will reveal it. Since you walk away from who is protecting you. That's what love endures or love bears means church. We are supposed to bear each other in the kingdom. So that the world does not have fingers to point. You people can process well. This is a social media age. When you take the system from the whole church and you got phones recording in the church and people can take a record, oh, so that's what she did, huh? You have exposed her to the community to be shamed. You don't do that to saints in the kingdom. Yes, sis. Wow. See? There you go. See? See? Wow. Wow. 
Yes. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, sis. He's able. Well, I'm happy that I'm talking to you. I'm talking. Yes. Thank you so much, sis. That's right. Good. Stay. Only then you could move. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Bless you. So we talking to you this morning. Love bears up. Love will always bear you through the situation. It will protect you. It will keep you safe while you're healing. That's how we treat each other in the kingdom. Now you want to tell me that the church loves the same as the world does? Because the world goes and tells the whole world, Hey! I got a record on you! I got a record on that one! You see, that's what the world does. The church does not come and begin to advertise your sin. The church is not wired to do that. We preserve you in righteousness. That's why the scripture says, confess your faults to each other. Pray. And then it says, the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous woman of faith. It doesn't talk about money. It's talking about how you get a, sin, a, a, a saint who did wrong back on track. So come back, kind of, one more time. Because you guys see how the scripture works. All right, love is bearing her up. So you come back and say, Pastor, I've, I've said and I'm wrong. Pastor, the scripture says when she confessed her fault to me the one who is not doing wrong will pray for her because of my righteous position it says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous one avails meaning now she is restored because of my prayer what do you have to do with that? exactly tell me please she confessed her fault I have prayed for her what does it have to do with you? Is she restored? Because the righteous prayer works. When the righteous prayer works in her life, how can I bring her to you afterwards and say that we have to put her on this thing for six months? All right. Thank you again. Beautiful little girl. That's my daughter right there. All right now. Okay. You know, I can't figure out, Papi. If you pray to Yahweh now, and say, Yahweh, please forgive me. I did wrong. I smoke the weed, I get high, and I fall in the gutter. <laughs> and Yahweh said, you're forgiven. How long it took? Who got to watch? Time me say how long it took. How long it took, man? Can you start recording? No. <laughs> Give me some second. <laughs> second. Yahweh, please forgive me. I did wrong. And I'm sorry. Oh, that's four seconds. Four seconds. And Yahweh said, you're forgiven. You're done. It's okay. Oh, I end up in front of you for six months. <laughs> so wait, man. Heaven is too slow for y'all. You see how serious this is? Yahweh could forgive you immediately. But the church has to hold it against you for six months. You want to think that's bad? They tell you you can't take communion. But Yeshua said that you take the blood for the remission of your sin. So when you do wrong, and they stop you from taking communion, they are leaving you in sin. That's why most people go back to it for the six months. Because they weaken you. And pastor feels so good to see every Sunday, or first Sunday, those who are in right standing with the Lord. Stand. All the other stand and she can't use it. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand and let you kind of lose it. You know how she feels? You feel she come back next week? No way. No because way. I already tell you she can't take communion. And you're embarrassing her every first Sunday for six months. Yeah. So how, how you standing on this side and you watching pornography? You watching naked skin man and woman? I'm pointing. I'm pointing. Exactly. You, you standing and you watching naked skin video whole night. But past and see. But she must sit. <coughs> you, brother. You. You. <laughs> Stripping the sister every Sunday with your eyes. You're taking off her clothes. And imagine what you're doing to the girl. Yes. But you stand. You all nobody yeah, right. Even the pastors. Oh. Yeah, oh. 
But she must sit for six months. When heaven forgive her in four when seconds. All right. You know what bothers me in, the, in this country and, and in the U.S. and across the world and Caribbean region? When preachers get mad when I preach like this. Imagine the person they say don't have love, they get angry. You shouldn't talk like that. So which one of us don't have love? If I'm saying that heaven forgive you, all right, and they say no, no man, no, six months, which one of us don't have love? All right. They're so confined to the world. They are ready to be exactly to function by a penal system, ah. which means when you do wrong, you are punished by us. Yeah. Exactly. By human. Although heaven forgive you. Apostle, are you saying that we are free to sin? Go by the Kanji Bridge. Check into the hospital. Because you're heading good. If after all I just said to you, you think it means that you feel the sin, go and check into a mental institution. Because your head can't be straight. The book said it is by the mercies of Yahweh that you repent. That's what he said. You know how many people have sat? Told me what they did. And I said, just like this, all right, I got you. You're all right, you're safe. Don't worry. You're wrong, you confess, let's move forward then. I even tell him, don't bring this back up to me. I am finished with this. You've confessed your wrong, be done. You know, many of them are functioning and preaching in the church today because I never took time to tell the church, well, church, we got a little problem here. Uh, Brother Clyde, I know that... Um, You've been trying long. No, he's a preacher now. He got to preach next week. I know you've been trying without drinking thing, boy, but we're knocking him one more time. I see Brother Clyde drunk yesterday, and I had to drag him out of the gutter church. Let's pray for Brother Clyde. Now, which one of you listen to him next week when he comes to preach? Hmm. When I just highlighted to you everything he did? This is we talking about the kingdom. We talking about the church. How the church must function. The church must bear each other up. The church must endure with one another. The church must hope for the best in him. Let me close. In verse 11. When I was a child. Y'all know pretty good. And this talking about love. I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I argued like a child. But now, that I become a man, this shall talk about himself. I have finished with my childish ways. I have four children. And the younger they are, the more they like to come in a report. Daddy, Mary stole the candy from the fridge. You know why they say that? Because they want to see Mary get a beating. That's how children function. But when you are mature in the faith, you don't come and tell me, Daddy, Mary stole the candy. You tell Mary. Then Daddy tell you not to take candy from the bridge. Put it back. And she puts it back. And I don't know. Because she corrected the wrong. Most preachers I know are children in the pulpit. Because they want to see punishment instead of restoration. Restoration is all more powerful than punishment. Right. Because the, the, the ministry of Yeshua the Messiah is reconciliation, not punishment. <laughs> My baby boy. The church, when you have love, you grow up into a man or a woman who is able to handle the confession of your brother and your sister and not tell the world about it. Yeah. That's maturity. Yeah. That's why church, you have to learn. If you're in here and you have a problem, you don't confess down. You don't find somebody weaker than you are and say, I'm going to tell you my trouble because after all, you're my good friend. You don't confess to a good friend. You find a mature saint who you know that when I talk to this person, they know how to treat me in my wrongdoing. 
I have a daughter who may be watching me this morning. I tell her all the time, I said, you cannot do anything to make me change how I think about you. A daughter in the faith. I said, if you do something wrong, you talk to me. It doesn't make me see you differently. You're still a saint. I said, the only time I will see you differently is if you walk away from the truth. Now, once you do that, that's it. But as long as you remain in the truth, you can do nothing to make me see you differently. You in here who my brothers and my sisters and sons and daughters in the faith through Apostle Joshua, I will not see you differently because you talked to me about what you did. No. You are still Yahweh's child who needs correction, who needs protection, yep. and who needs recon reconciliation. Yep. That's how I treat you. Amen. Nobody had a heart attack. Some faces got a little blue. <laughs> but you live. Yes. And I'm glad you're living. Yes. So when you are in the kingdom of heaven, you will understand why you had to leave those kinds of churches. Because your heavenly father never made you to function by that system. You were never made to function in that kind of environment. It is dangerous. It destroys people's lives. And it makes some people feel as if they're more important than others. Yes. That's what it does. Oh, yes. And what it does is, yes, you, you, you become like a lodge. A big secret environment because nobody could tell anything. I have to keep my secret closed because if I tell my secret, then the whole church is going to look at me differently. Yes, so true. But in the kingdom of heaven, you are always safe in the love of a saint. If you love your sister as much as you say you love her in this church, you will try your best for the church to see her the way they should. If you are so eager for the church to see your sister as a sinner, you'll warn yourself. You just want your sin to be hidden while hers is exposed. If you think that your brother is your brother for real, you'll always try to protect him. Even if he's wrong, you protect him. You're not a dog, you're not a sheep, but just in principle. If my dog is sick, I'll put him in the kennel, I'll lock the door because I want him to get injured. And every so often I'll go and check him. One day sleepy, sleepy. Make sure he's living. And then I dress his wound and lock the door again. No other dog in the community sees sleepy being sick. Because my job is to fix him back until he's okay to walk again. Hallelujah. Yes. Isn't that how you do it? Yes. If you have a sheep that's sick, you can keep the sheep in a closed area. You can't walk for, all right, I can feed you. I can give you some food to eat today. I'll give you some water. I can dress your wounds. And I keep checking you, all right? And I can rub your head. I'm sure you ask to comfort you all the time. Yeah. And when the sheep is okay, I let the sheep go out to eat with the other sheep again. That's how love should function in the church, say. How many of us come looking for each other when we are wounded? So the person doesn't come to church today, as you see it. Do you go home and say, sis, I didn't see you. No, you know she's wrong. I know she's hurt. And you say, sis, I didn't see you this morning, but Apostle Joshua preached about love. And he starts showing the scripture. You're giving her the food in the pen because you know she can't move. After a while, she's okay to come out and walk again and every, nobody knows what she's been through because she's healthy to walk again. That's how we treat one another in the church. Oh, thank you, Yeshua. When you see Yahweh is ready to deal with some of you preachers who misuse and abuse his people, no. your prayers can't even stop it. No. Oh, my Oh, man. That's why some people are struck with sickness and disease and they can't get over it. Because Yahweh said, in my wrath, I will deal with them. They continue to abuse people just so that they could look good on the pulpit. And then Yahweh said, I will show the world that I'm against you. You can't stop his hand from dealing with them because they're wicked. My heart, Apostle Joshua's heart, is always to see you are protected in love. Amen. 
so you could be a light shining in the community. Yeah. Amen, church. Y'all all right? Yeah. We survive? Yeah. We breathing good? Yeah. Wonderful. Let us stand. You've been sitting for a while. <laughs> Facebook viewers, I thank you for your time. I pray today, saints. I try my best to keep myself on. I try to shout to make noises after me. What's it? Because I want it with all my heart for you to hear in the most calm manner how serious this First Corinthians 13 is. And that's why the church preach about it so much because they don't know it. This text carries so much responsibility. We have to be careful. While you're standing, I bring to remembrance a case with Moshi, Aharon, and his sister, Miriam. Aharon and Miriam spoke against Moshi because Moshi married a woman, a Kushite, I think it was. They were mad. I can't believe he married this woman. They started to talk and said, Moshi feels just because he could hear from God, from Yahweh, he could do what he wanted. And Yahweh's anger. Yahweh is love, but his anger against the two of them was boiling. Yeshua had millions of people, millions of people in his population. Yahweh said to Moshe, Aharon and Miriam, the three of you, come to meet me by the tabernacle. I could walk over there, girlfriend. I could move. So you, you Israel, Yahweh told the three, the two leaders who did wrong, come. So come Aaron, come Miriam, sorry, because I got to be Moshe in this case. They want me to be Moshe. I could be Moshe then. I could be, yes, come. So the three of us are going to meet Yahweh in private. In private. He ain't come and tell you all, Israel, 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 Aaron and Miriam said, your leaders did wrong. I'm going to deal with that today. I'm going to... Did Yahweh do that? No. Yahweh said, here, here, here. Three of you come to me privately at a tabernacle of meeting because we got to have a conversation. In private, he said, you got the nerve to talk about Moshe to you all when I left him to leave you. You serious? You are his past Moshe, huh? But I got to strike you with leprosy. Boom! She became white as snow in private. None of you knew what she'd been through. Aaron started, hold up. Hold up. There's no fireworks playing here. This is not to play with here. It was in private. Yep. And when Yahweh realized, you catch yourself now, you're all right? All right, come. Go before my people now. They were went back to Israel after a while. Come back. And none of you knew what she'd been through. Do you see how love dealt with her when she was wrong? Yeah. That's because love knows her heart. Yeah. I just want you to sit back now. I just want you to stretch your leg. If you have your trees in your heart, your heart better pick, pick, pick up back pieces. So I'll go back. Jordan. Some of your heart is coming down. All right. You can sit. Now I've got another set of people. This time, some sons of Korah decided they want to fight Moshe. And say that Moshe think that he alone could hear from Yahweh. We too could hear from Yahweh. Because after all, we men of God. And Yahweh said, no, you're pushing it too far now. Look at the difference. This time he said, Moshe, tell Israel, whoever is on your side, come over here. And you're all going to be safe. Because today I will deal with Korah and his son, the whole house I will deal with. He didn't call them to no private place. What's the difference? Why do you get called to some private meeting? Now, the sons are called it wrong. You don't want me to be private anymore. You know why? Because in this case, they were trying to challenge Moshe's power. And Yahweh said, you want to push it so far? Where you want to turn people against Moshe? Well, watch this. Everybody who's against Moshe, I will kill you all. 
That's love function too, right? So what do you notice in, this, in, this, in these two accounts? In one case, because love knows his heart, love says, come and talk to me privately. I will discipline you, but it will be private. In another case, because love knows their heart, he said, no. Even if I talk to you privately, you still hate my servants. I will kill you. Some people who claim to be saved will be dealt with on a public platform because Yahweh knows privacy doesn't change you. Some people could change in a private meeting. Others, because their nature is never to follow Yahweh, he will never give them the same privilege like Aharon and Miriam. Only you know in this ministry if an apostle or sister baby or somebody that talks to you in private, if you listen and you learn. I don't know that. I don't know half of you. You know. Facebook, you know whether privacy is enough to change you. Amen. Amen. What I could tell you is this. If your mind is to fight authority, Yahweh will always deal with you publicly. I don't see anyone in here with that because you don't want to have it. The day you see somebody in here, one of these brothers who leadership tell you that apostle think you could preach, I could preach better than apostle. And it's not, they want to fight. That's when Yahweh says, You're a son of Korah. I will deal with you publicly to show the church that you don't fight my leadership and survive. Amen? Amen. May blessings abound to you all today. I thank you so much. Facebook views, I thank you as well. I'll see New Jersey at 2 o'clock. Shalom. Blessings.